Here we have the Swiffy website. Um, it's currently set up with, in a format that's difficult to edit. Um, it's four pages, um, a few images, contact form and a map, and several links. So we're actually going to create a Google site um, similar to this so that we can more easily edit the Swiffy website. So to do that, I'm going to search for Google Sites. Sign in with my Google account. And create a new site. OK, I'm just going to call it the Southwest Iowa Freedom Farm Initiative, Swiffy. Um, this URL is going to end up being too long. Uh, we'll let it try it, though. Um, for now, I'm just going to select um, Try this theme, Wintermint, and come back and change that later. More options, um, the site description. Let's see. I do have a description handy. Okay, share that with everyone. Um, I'm typing a little code here, and it will complain because our site name must be between six and thirty characters. So. Um, right up here, we're going to have to change it to something shorter. So I think I'll just do it. Southwest IA um, Farm. This isn't too critical because our web address will be swifty.org. Okay, now that we've got our uh, Google site uh, going, the first thing I want to do uh, is actually download all the images from the old site. Now I could, uh, I'm going to do some copy and paste here, and I could just copy the images. The trouble is the images um, are hosted on, right now they're hosted on another website, and so if they ever were deleted from there or their address changed, uh, we'd lose them on our new site. So what I'm going to do is actually just save these images in a folder on my desktop, and then we'll re-upload them to the new website. Save this image, and then do that for the other pages here. It's just a handful of them, so in this case it's relatively easy to do. Um, of course, you may just want to upload new images in some cases. Okay, so that's it for our images. Um, now let's start... Um, creating a few pages. So I think the first thing I'll do is actually create the other three pages and then go back and start adding some content. So to create a page, I'm just going to hit this new page button up here, uh, about us. I do want to put that at the top level. That looks good. Create. Let's do the contact us page next. Oh, this is our About Us page. I'm just going to save that right now. We can come back to that. Create another one. Top level again. And save that page. Create another one, which is uh, Resources. From there, we can start adding content. So let's let's start with a Resources page. Um, Resources. Here are a few some of our favorite resources related to local food. Okay, so I'm gonna actually uh, kind of keep the same structure of kind of a little um, section up here and two columns, and then we'll put a, a footer down there. And, and the footer actually is on all pages, so we'll do that separately. For right now, let's just do uh, this content right in there, kind of middle section there. To do that, I'm gonna actually change my page layout. So I have a two-column layout, which gives me two columns. But I also have this two-column layout, which gives me a section at the top and bottom. So I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to take this line here, paste that into this. And you can barely see it here, but there is a little bit of um, a background uh, color showing through there. So I'm just going to hit this button that's Remove Formatting. And that gets rid of the background, any any uh, styles that were applied from the previous site. 
Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the links. I'm just going to copy, paste. There you can see the background. Uh, the trouble now, if I do that, uh, clear formatting, or remove formatting, is I'll. Nope, I didn't lose my links. I was worried I would. Um, that's good. Do that, and let's actually make some of these headings. Um, headings are nice in that they give a little structure to your site. Uh, these are maybe minor headings that are not critical. Uh, so this is a minor heading H4. Your H1, which H1 through 6, uh, your options there. This might be an H1, or is this an H4? And uh, maybe you sort of have an outline on your site where you do some of the other headings. We'll maybe see that later on. Okay, so there's, um, we could make these into lists. Oops, a link a list. By clicking on this wallet list button, or we could do a numbered list. I'm going to do the same thing for the other column there. Copy. I'm just hitting uh, Control-C on my keyboard. There you can see the background in the orange text. I'm going to highlight all that. Uh, that was select all. Clear formatting, remove formatting. Let's do the same thing with around there. Okay, uh, one thing I might want to do uh, in transferring an older site like this uh, is, is check that these links uh, still work. Okay, so we've, we've started to uh, recreate some more pages there. So there's our resources page. Go to the con Let's go to the About Us page. That one will be a bit more straightforward. I click Edit Page. And let's take a look at the About Us page. Okay, very similar in structure in that we have a section at the top and then uh, a couple columns there. So let's um, just start doing that. So I'm going to copy everything below About Us. About us is up there. Paste that in. Uh, select it all in clear formatting again. That's okay, probably. Um, now, I forgot to change the layout. Let's do that. Change layout to two columns. Okay, that put that in the wrong section, so I'm just going to copy that or cut that and paste that above. Next, first column here. Right, once again, clear formatting. We'll do the same thing over here. And we'll come back to that picture. I'm going to set these. I've got a little white space above there, as you can see. Do headings. Try out either of those. Oops. I just hit undo there. Maybe this is a H3, maybe that's an H4. Have to kind of see how it looks once we uh, create it there. Okay, so these are actually links to PDFs on another website. We could uh, upload those PDFs. I think for now, just leave them on the Golden Hills RCD website. Uh, presumably that website will be there for quite a while. So we'll leave those. Okay, what do we got here? This is a level 3. 
three heading. Complete with empty wait phase. Feel that look. Save. Okay, we're starting to get our uh, structure there. I'm going to now upload that photo or insert that photo. So edit page. Go to where I want. Hit enter. And up in this menu bar, there's insert image. So we're going to use that to choose an image on our computer. Okay. Um, you see, we have some options here. You know, size. Whether uh, the text wraps around it or not. I kind of see that's the little text there, and we can align it, do the same thing um, with our content here using the align buttons on the toolbar. Hit save for now. Okay, we're starting to build out our site. Let's go to the contact us page next. Hit edit page. Okay, this looks like we have uh, two columns in the section uh, at the bottom. I'm going to copy this. Control C there on the keyboard. Change the layout to two columns or sections at top and bottom. Click formatting. Select these two headings. Search engines do sort of look at the headings and kind of say, oh, they made this a heading that must be important. So they kind of uh, judge your, your page by some of the headings a lot of times, if I understand it. Okay, let's, let's first do this map um, below here. I'm going to go up to the insert menu and click on map. And I can do one of two things I can type in an address here. Or if I've created a map, I can actually, um, using Google Maps, I can actually insert that map. Uh, for this one, we're just going to use a simple address, so I'll just see if I can find uh, Golden Hills RCND. If I can't, we'll just enter the address manually. There it is. That's good. Um, let's back out a little bit. And hit select. Uncheck these boxes to include the border and the title. Um, 500 pixels high. Right now, this is going to fill the whole page with. Uh, based on this, I think that's okay. Hit save. And when we hit save, we'll actually be able to see that map. Okay, I might make that a little narrower. So do that on the edit page. Click on the map. Click the properties uh, button that pops up. And maybe give it a width of 600 pixels. Okay. Um, we could also, I'm going to start using the keyboard shortcuts now. So I'm going to hit E to edit the page actually center that map. Control S is the shortcut for save, so Control S. Oh, that's not going to work on my computer. Control S does something else, so I guess we're not using Control S. Okay, uh, let's, let's take a look at this contact form. Now this is actually uh, maybe one of the more complex parts, and to set up a contact form, I'm actually going to use a tool called Wofu. Um, it's free uh, for up to three forms and ten fields. Here we only have, you know, I guess five fields if you count this, but uh, we'll only need four. And uh, it's, it's a great tool in that um, works well, it's reliable, it's, it's uh, user-friendly. So let's set that up. I'm going to go to wufu.com 
Um, you can create a free account by clicking this button. And a uh, URL, so it might just be Swiffy. In this case, I'm actually just going to set one up with um, my current Wufu account, and we'll come back later and create a new account for uh, Swiffy. But for now, uh, the process will be the same. I'm just going to use um, my paid account here. Uh, looking at the different plans, here's the free account. Uh, one user, three forms, uh, 100 entries per month. Once you start getting up into the uh, $30 range, you have uh, the ability to take credit card payments. That can be quite handy if you are uh, taking registrations, donations, that sort of thing. Um, if you are a 501c3 nonprofit, these plans are half price. So I'm going to log in with my account. There we go. You can see some of the forms I've created. I'm going to hit new form. It's very uh, user friendly to create. So I just drag and drop the um, fields I want on my form. So I might say name email, uh, section for question or comments. I'm going to click on that. Let's write question or comment. Look at this again. And phone, OK. So Um, we can do things like make these fields required. So we might make the field required. I might make it larger or smaller. Might add a field um, for the organization. Company. that. Um, I'm going to give my form a title. Maybe uh, copy this as well. It has the description. Just contact. I do need to use a unique name here. So uh, I, I think I probably use contact us. So that's why I'm using contact Swiffy. Um, we can set up what happens when somebody submits this form? What do they see? Uh, with the free version, you, you're just able to show text. With a, with a paid version, you can actually redirect them to a page on your website. Um, with either version, you can send them an email saying, hey, thanks for uh, contacting us. We'll get back to you shortly, that sort of thing. Um, you send it to the an email address they entered and have them reply to, uh, to you. You can customize that email. This would uh, optionally include what they entered into the form. Um, you can do some cool things with the templates. I won't get into it too much, but basically you could you can um, use some of the fields that they've they've entered. So, uh, for example, you might say something like and and you want to click the two links to learn more about this. But it would be something like this. It would be here field one, and it would show up as you know, dear Brad, thanks. Uh, that's how that would work. Now I'll just leave it like that. Um, let's see, what else do we have up here under form settings? Okay, we have our, yep, that looks good. Name, business, uh, not, which is not required. We'll leave that not required. You know, some of the other fields you could add, you could add a 
uh, multiple choice, a drop down menu, uh, check boxes where you could um, for each of these, you know. Um, you know, I have different options like, you know, what are you interested in now? Um, I could check the box and you would know kind of why they were contacting you or um, you can see how that would be handy, having a form with some different options to collect more information, I guess. Uh, with the paid accounts, you can accept file uploads. Um, a liker just would be handy for a survey. Usually collect a mailing address. You might say that and set the default country for the United States if that's where you are. Okay, so when that's done, I'm just going to hit uh, save form. I can set up email notifications now. Now these are, this is something that um, you know, when somebody fills out a form, uh, you can have it send an email with their entry to you. So we're going to have it sent to this info at swifty.org email address. And when you receive that, that address, you can reply to the email that they've added. Um, Swiffy. Swiffy works good. And I just say uh, Swiffy contact form uh, number one is, is how you would receive that email. So it would be from this this uh, name. It actually ends up being from like uh, no reply at woofoo.com, but it will show up as this name with this name, and then. The subject is Swifty contact form entry number one. That's okay, like that. I'm gonna hit save. You can also have it sent to your um, your cell phone, your mobile phone, and you can do things like if you use, you know, a Mailchimp or something like that, it will actually uh, maybe add to your contact list. So let's say you have a newsletter that goes out, you know, on a monthly basis, and you use Mailchimp to send out that newsletter. This will automatically add their email to that address. So maybe this is a sign up form for the newsletter. Hit save. And the last little piece here is actually to um, copy the code for this form and embed that on your website. So actually, okay, I, hit, I guess it's saved. I'm going to click forms. There's our form. Um, and we can view the entries in the past. Obviously, for this, we haven't had any yet. We can export those to Excel. That could be handy for a survey. Um, you can view the form and try it out. Uh, what we're going to do in this case is actually uh, just get the code for it. You could this protect. You can make it a um, password protected form. I'm going to click the link to embed the form code. And, you know, in, in many cases, this code will work, but for Google Sites, which is what we're building, um, you actually need to use this iframe version. So I'm going to click that, hit copy. For WordPress, you can use the, the short, code, short code down here. That's WordPress.com. It's in combination with their plugin. And Facebook. Uh, embed your form on Facebook. Or send out the link via email. So that just pops up a, a new mail message. Okay, so I've got the, the code copied. I'm going to go back to the Contact Us page. Make sure I'm editing that page. Uh, click where I want in the section of the box I want that code to go. And then I need to actually click this Edit HTML Source button up in the toolbar. Just select all that and paste over it. That's just an empty line. Break. Uh, paste. So there's our code coming in. Update. And hit Save. So there it is. That's the contact form ready to go. Uh, built with Wufu and uh, everything's kind of taken care of. Care of on that end. So 
Um, somebody fills this out, hit submit, you get the email um, and can reply to them from there. If you want to go back and edit your form at all, you just return to Wufu and edit the form and this should automatically be updated. If you ever run into a case where um, the submit button is not showing up, what's likely happened is that your form has, you've added more fields uh, to your form here. So you, you, you went back, uh, maybe added a field, saved it, and then you, you didn't update the code. Um, you didn't copy and paste it in again. That's probably what's happened. It, it tends to, um, you know, set with the Google Sites version, it sets a height of, I think it was like 600 pixels that we copied this one in. And so if you added a field, you would, your form would actually be 700 pixels tall, but it would only be showing the first 600 pixels. So you just need to go, um, I'm going to cancel this. And just like we did, you know, recopy the code um, from here and paste it in again. So there you can see where the height's coming in, 508. And, and so if, if we would have added a field, that might have changed to, you know, 700, oops, 700, but the code on this page was still, code over here was still 500. So that's what's going on with that. Okay, uh, we've got our contact page. Uh, we need to add one photo there, I think. Edit the page. Let's see what we had. Just the Golden Hills building. I'm going to click right there, kind of. I know I want it right around there. Insert the image. Upload that. Hit OK when I'm ready. And in this case, I can actually uh, use the text wrap. So I'm going to hit wrap on, and then I'm going to align it to the right. Okay. We actually don't need it to link to anything, so I'm going to just remove that link. So when somebody clicks on the image, nothing happens. Close Wufu down. Okay, so we've got our four pages now. We still need to do our home page. Let's do that quickly. Okay. Copy some of that. Change the layout. And moving the formatting. And doing it by formatting it in our own way. that. Paste that over here. Move formatting. You know, this is a list. Just click that list button up there for a bullet list. Oh, where'd it go? Sorry about that. Uh, maybe you add a, maybe you add an email in here. So you could do something like, uh, you know, info at swifty.org. Uh, you could highlight that and hit this link button. And then when somebody clicks on that, it will actually bring up Another email client with a blank message. Okay, let's add um, one photo in here. Hit E for edit page. And insert an image. Actually, drag that image up there if we want to. Extra white 
line in there. White face, actual white face. Okay, and we can add some of this stuff. Uh, the blog, I'm actually going to put the blog up in the menu bar. I think that makes sense. Um, local food producer. Okay, Iowa grower directory. Um, let's see what we've got there. Okay, I, I don't think that quite makes sense right where it is, so let's, let's actually create, um, do that some other way. So we'll come back to that. All right, so we've got our four pages created. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, create a menu bar across the top. So to do that, uh, it's easiest once you've created all your pages. I'm going to go to More and Manage Site. And then on uh, Site Layout, it's on the left, left column there. I'm going to say Change Site Layout. And check this box next to Horizontal Navigation Bar. And that will allow us to use one of those. I'm going to uncheck the box next to Sidebar, which will take away our sidebar, sidebar there on the left. I might even add a footer where, where you can put the contact information. I like to um, set a fixed width for a lot of Google Sites, and I tend to just use 960 pixels as a, as a, a width that it's, um, you know, most computer screens without being too small. It's kind of a good balance between uh, people with big screens and people with small screens. Okay, you can see our sidebar is no longer there. But we have this new option to edit the horizontal navigation bar content. I'm going to click that. And here's where we can add pages to that, that menu uh, of sorts. So I'm going to add the pages in the order that I want them. So add each of our pages. OK, and I see that I did get these two switched around, so I can actually use uh, these arrows just to rearrange things. And the, the side arrows, the left and right arrows, are actually, um, you know, it, it sort of creates a drop down menu. So somebody would, uh, let's try this out. You know, if that one's indented versus not indented, it's indented. And we go look at our site, uh, we'll have sort of this drop down menu. That's how you do those. Site layout. I think in this case we'll just leave that in its own uh, slot. A few options as to how those um, links appear in the menu, whether they're kind of boxes or uh, just just text or kind of a tab-like look. What we're going to do too is add the blog. So let's do that. Let's uh, add a URL. And here's where we can just um, copy this link to the blog, paste that in. Okay. Hit OK. And uh, let's, let's take a look at our footer now. edit the footer content and we're going to use this as the footer clear my remove formatting and this sort of remove formatting button is um, you also see one in WordPress I keep saying clear formatting I think in WordPress it's clear formatting but it comes in handy with a number of, of uh, tools. I'm going to link, add a link. Hit OK. Um, let's see if there's anything here. I'll hide those two. I'm 
when I get rid of this search, that's this configure search up here. Just disable that. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's um, with four pages, there's not a lot to search, so I just keep it clean, simple. Okay. Um, let's add our logo. Let's add the uh, logo at the top here. To do that, I'm going to hit uh, more manage site. Go to site layout again. And under header there, change logo. There's a custom logo. Upload that from the computer. Okay. Um, when you do this, you know, this, it, this is nice because this image is actually uh, the right size, but you know, if you uploaded a photo, it might take up you know, the whole screen and more. So you actually need to resize that photo uh, beforehand. And a good way to do that is to use a tool called Picnic, um, where you can actually do this all on the web. So you go to Picnic, you would upload your photo, Find it here. And you would resize it. You know, so it might it might be at uh, four thousand, which is you know this big. Something like you know, it's just absolutely huge. So uh, you'd probably want to resize that. We'll just make it a little smaller. Hit apply and then go to the save and share and save your image back to your um, computer. And then upload that uh, as your logo. Uh, one thing you can do too, you can actually change the fonts on your site. That, that tends to be something that uh, is kind of fun to do. Um, to do that, I'm going to go to this manage site and under site layout is colors and fonts. Uh, there you see a number of things. So um, for starters I guess you can you can change the theme. So instead of this winter mint you could actually pick mint chip and that's going to change uh, a few things. There's mostly changing color. Uh, you know something else might change it a little more drastically. Kind of preview some different themes. Kind of take a broad uh, sweep at changing the look of your site. Let me go back to the winter mint. Um, once you kind of picked your theme, you're, you're more or less satisfied. You can actually then tweak it, uh, really get down to the details. So under this, you know, site header, I might change the font. Um, that's just going to change this font right here. So you might, if I just pick a font, um, pick a size, which works sort of well, looks okay. Um, you know, color there. Play around with that. You know, we could actually have a background image. Um, instead of a logo, we might, we might do this two ways. We can have a logo that's the entire width of this uh, screen. So maybe create that image of Picnic to be, you know, probably about 920 pixels wide, and you know, one or 200 tall. That would kind of um, make your logo fill up the whole space. And then we could actually remove this text, or we could leave this text and use a background image. That's what uh, this option is. We can change the fonts on our pages so the content font you know could change too and you do a few more options here for fonts than you would um, where you change it on the page itself I think I might just go with the pretty basic one for now but uh, you can see there is quite a selection Of fonts there. You 
come back and, and play with that. Um, we could change the color of our um, horizontal menu bar there. Yes, we might change how our menu looks. A lot of options. Uh, you can make it look terrible pretty quickly, uh, just clicking around. Not much of an artist, but um, if you do, if you are kind of looking for a color scheme, a site you might check out. Colorlovers.com, it's, it's spelled with a U. Um, and there you can find color palettes and actually get um, you know, an idea of, of how you want to play out your site. It's kind of a cool resource. We hit save. Back to the site. Actually, that's kind of tricky. Let's let's look at that again. So, how do you get back to the site? You know, I'm clicking here all the time, but if that was scroll down, I can click there. That'll take me back, or I can click on Google. That's confusing. Uh, here, what I want to do actually is get rid of this page title. I can do that under the page settings. Just don't show the page title. There are no links. There are no sub pages, so there. That's not going to happen. Um, there are no links to show. I should get rid of that and see how we're doing. Oh, we still have to add that in there. Okay. Um, so if we really wanted to, we could we could try to match these colors and a little more of a look and feel of this site. Let's see if we can't make this menu a little bigger. I'm kind of curious if I can do that. That would be under colors and fonts. And horizontal navigation bar that you see thing for size. Did it? Nope, I think we're out of luck with that. So this is actually, um, since this is a form, this might be something that you could use Wufu for, um, where you'd have, you know, check boxes for each of the uh, products. Yeah, this would be a pretty uh, straightforward Wufu form. If you did want to upload it as a PDF, which you might do. Let me just save this PDF to my computer here. Go back to the website. Um, there's our footer. I guess I, we did paste that in. That's kind of where that's coming in. We could reformat that to look a little um, cleaner. Well, let's just let's just have a look at attaching the PDF. So if I edit the page, I have a couple options. Um, oh, I actually need to enable the page settings. So, sorry about that. Let's go to more and page settings and do this allow attachment. So let's take a look at that method. If we do that, then at the bottom, we have the ability to attach a file. So we can attach a PDF, upload that, and it will show up um, you know, when somebody comes to visit the site, it's going to look something like like this. Um, probably not exactly what what you're looking for. Oh, it turns out I'm logged in. Hang on a second. Actually, there's a better way to do this. Let's go to more and page as viewer. That's the best way to do that. I, I tend to you know, log out, but 
Uh, we don't need to do that. So uh, they could, you know, that might work. Um, I've seen something like that. That's probably the easiest way to add an attachment. Another way to do it would actually be to copy this link now that you've attached the page. And just link to it, or link to it in its current, you know, it's currently on the Golden Hills RCD site. So I could, um, just, what was it called again? Let's see. So yeah, I'm actually, I think this in two browsers. Um, it wouldn't be all that different if, if there were two users editing this site. Click the link button. And there I'm going to, you know, it's not actually an existing page, it's a web address. So I'm going to paste that link in here. Save that. And then, um, you know, in this case, I could probably turn off the uh, attachments. So I might disallow the attachments. Let's try that preview pages viewer again. So there we have our PDF, which opens up. And we don't have the PDF at the bottom. And that's one way to do the, uh, the attachments. Um, that's that's an attachment for the, for the page. You can also, under Manage Site, you also see attachments for this, the entire website. So this is actually probably the easiest way to to do what I just did, you know, upload a PDF and then um, and then copy the link and link to that on your page. So um, from now on, we can just upload PDFs to that. This section, you could also try uploading as a Google Doc. And as a Google Doc, you can actually Google Doc, you can um, insert it through the, the uh, menu here. Where is it? Google Doc. There it is. You can see a list of your documents. Um, let's see if we can't. Let's see what we can. Let's, let's see what this does. This is something from the water sampling uh, I do. Save. Okay, that, that didn't work so well. Um, that that may not be the best way to do that. Uh, you know, it, it isn't really fitting the the width of the column. Get rid of that. So uh, I'd say you know I like the method of manage site, clicking on attachments and uploading it to your kind of storage space on your Google site and then uh, copying that link from there and linking to it that way. I just um, like this, like we just did. Might create a section there. Like that. Although in this case, like I said, I think Woohoo might be a, a good alternative. So you might offer both uh, solutions. All right, that's a uh, building a Google site. I think we covered uh, quite a few things, probably not everything. Uh, the last thing you'll probably want to do. Um, is of course you know transfer the domain name to your new site, and you want to uh, set up Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. This will allow you to uh, track statistics on web traffic. This will uh, allow you to submit your site map to the search engine and learn a little bit about how Google see the, the search engine sees your website. 
Um, you might go share it with your collaborators. So, you know, I might add uh, other people as owners of the site so they can log in and see that as well. Uh, the account isn't created yet, but uh, that's how you do that. I'd say, um, let's see, www.swifty.org will want to do that. And uh, this is just part of the process of connecting this address with our Google site. Uh, this is the easy part. The difficult part is actually on the other end. So with your domain name registrar, you have to um, transfer the site to Google. Okay, let's... Let's call that good. Thanks for watching.